Hey everybody, what is up? This is Devin Lavore coming at you. Back in action as a solo agent again. <laughs> and to be totally honest with you guys, my heart is just like super heavy today. And uh, I just count it as like the work of the Lord and what he's doing in my in my life and in my heart. But I wanted to share something with you guys who maybe are in the same position and your heart gets heavy and you just wonder, God, when? You know what I'm saying? So many prophetic words, so many encouragements, so much directly from you that we can attest to being from you. But God, when? You know, when? And so today, I was asking the Lord, I don't know why it came up in my mind, but I do account it to like just the Holy Spirit bringing it up. Um, but I began to think about Zechariah and Elizabeth, and I saw this picture of Zechariah being in the priesthood and just sitting there, just doing his priestly thing, you know? And, and I asked the Lord, I was like, Lord, what? Why them? Like, why did you pick them of all people? Why them? You know? And then I thought about Mary, who carried Jesus. I was like, God, why? Why her? You know? Why? And then the Lord began to give me this theme from the scriptures. And it comes from Luke chapter 1, verse 48 where Mary is saying to Elizabeth, who had already had a miracle, and she was in her sixth month of receiving this miracle, um, she's answering a question to, uh, and it's verse 48, it says, for he has looked upon the low station and humiliation of his handmaiden. And I think about Ruth, you know, how Ruth, she she could have gone back like the other girl did, but she didn't. She said, no, I'm going to stay with you. So she wasn't really following Naomi. She was really following the Lord. She was putting her trust in the Lord. And she was in a, she was in a low station and humiliation of life, you know. But the Lord saw that. And he saw it in Mary. And he saw it in Elizabeth. He, and Zechariah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and he saw it in Hannah. And Elkanah. You know, remember, these people had husbands as well. In Ruth's case, she lost her husband. And God said, well, I'm going to restore you. And he restored her from a place of obscurity where no one would have ever known her story. To a place where she was part of the lineage of Jesus Christ. And so... I just felt like the Lord was saying that. He was just like, there was just a sense of like, he looks upon the low station and humiliation, meaning the humble circumstances, meaning when you're in a position where you cannot do anything else and, and for yourself, and if anything is going to happen, it's going to come from the hand of God. It's just going to have to be God doing it, you know, because I'm in such a situation that I have I have no one else, you know. Abraham and Sarah had gone so far beyond childbearing, it was going to be only God. Elizabeth and Zechariah had gone so far beyond childbearing, they had pretty much given up. Well, we're just not going to have children. We're going to be without children. We're in a station of life where it's kind of a somewhat of a shame and a grief and a bummer that we never really just, we never got to have kids. And God's like, wait, you're still alive, right? Yeah. Okay, hold on. There's hope. <laughs> you know? And Ruth is just like, I don't care. There's nothing for me to go back to in the place that I already know what that life is like. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to follow the God of Israel. I'm going to change my whole life and change everything. I, I have nothing. I have, I have nothing else. It's like when you're in that place, when you just have nothing else. You know, <clears throat> and then Psalm ten seventeen says, O Lord, 
you have heard the desire and the longing of the humble and oppressed. Um, see, some people, they're prideful and oppressed, and God just has a different way of dealing with them. You know, but for those of us who are who are humble and oppressed, he's heard the desire and the longing. And it says, you will prepare and strengthen and direct their hearts. You will cause your ear to hear. Why? To do justice to the fatherless and the oppressed. So that man who is of the earth may not terrify them anymore. That's what Boaz did for Ruth, according to the plan and will of God. And so I was just asking the Lord that. I was like, Lord, why them? And then naturally, it just made me think of us in our journey. I'm like, God, why us? Why, why us? Why you pick us to do this? You know, you could have, you could have led our lives in many different directions. You could have blessed our lives in such a way to give me a career or Michelle a career, or we could, you could have done it so many different ways. Why, why did you choose us to do it this way? You know. And I just feel like there's a sense of like, I see the place you're in in life. I saw way back when the place you were in in life. And I knew that you, you, had, you had nothing to offer to the marketplace and all that speaking specifically to me. And, and in order for you to do that, you'd have to admit, and your life would have to go in such a different direction. Um, and it wasn't the direction God wanted us to go. And God's like, he hears the cries of the humble, no matter where they're at or what's going on in their life. You know, no matter what's going on in their life, he hears them and he cares. He cares. He cares so much about what bothers us. Um, Psalm 138.8 says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns us. Yeah, so that was just on my heart today. And I wanted to share it with you because I really felt like the Lord was sharing that with me. Like, he listens. He's very attentive. He, there's another scripture that says the Lord is near to the brokenhearted. And God must be very, very close to me today because I am super brokenhearted right now. <laughs> but man, look at the promise of God for the brokenhearted. Look at the, the Psalm 147, 3, I think it's. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up all their wounds. It's like God has a plan for the oppressed and the lowly and those. He has looked upon the low station and humiliation of his people. And he's like, oh, I'm going to come down. And we know, we know what happened with Ruth. We know what happened with Mary. We know what happened with Zechariah and Elizabeth. We know what happened with Hannah. You know what I'm saying? We know what happened with these people. And who trusted in God because he was the only answer. We know what happened with Abraham and Sarah. You know, we know what happened to them. God showed up in such a way that disappointment couldn't even find the planet they were on, let alone their house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so I hope that that is an encouragement to you guys out there, who, whoever this might be for. Who, who am I talking to? Are you out there? <laughs> Whoever I'm talking to, I hope this is an encouragement for you that God hears your cries. He he cares. And it doesn't matter where you're at in life, whether you've got all the money and wealth and fame and likes and all that in life, but you're hollow inside and you're wondering what God's doing and you're you know, you got all, there's a myriad of issues out there. But <clears throat> God cares about what's bothering you and the longing that you've had in your heart for the promise to come to pass or the dream to be fulfilled or the desire to be fulfilled um whatever it is because when i met michelle i, w I didn't have necessarily a promise from god that i was longing and hoping for i just had a desire that i had to be married and i just god was the only one who could do it for me and it seemed like it was just taking forever I just was like, I'm going to be single forever, man. I'm 36 years old, and I'm going to be single forever. And the Lord's like, oh, you've reached that pl place? Oh, I can start working now. <laughs> I don't know if that's a prerequisite, but <laughs> but surrender is a big part of humility, isn't it? And so perhaps you're in a blessed place to be brokenhearted and humble 
and in a low station of life where God can, is on, the only answer. It kind of sets us up for a great, big, huge glory of God to come into our lives, right? So I pray blessing on all of you who hear this, anyone who, who needs to hear this message. Have faith. Mark eleven twenty two. Have faith in God always. You know, don't let your heart be troubled, John 14, 1. Like your deep spirit man. Don't let your faith drop. Don't, don't give up your fearless confidence and throw it away. You know, God will come through. He always does. And when he does, man, he comes through with a Samuel. He, he comes through with a John the Baptist and a Jesus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he comes through with just a glory that dwarfs all of your pain. You know, and so I thought somebody was coming through the door there, but, but anyway, I hope this blessed you guys. And I just pray a blessing on all of you who have heard it who, and who needed to hear it. So until next time, love you guys. Bye-bye.